Okay, so I have started recording. Let me share my screen. Okay, so just stop me whenever uh, it's, uh, let, let me set the decorum first. Uh, I will go over some basics initially so that you understand what the database is, what the data uh, warehousing is and how the, like uh, these uh, data management works across the company. So like it's, it's basically the same infrastructure, doesn't matter you are using uh, HDFS or like any other uh, platforms. Uh, like all of them kind of works the same way and uh, like underneath the, the management is kind of the same. It's, it gets a little complex depending on the size of the data that you are uh, like working with. Uh, it like initially it started with one table and then like they, they were able to do the query engine and it used to be fine. Like, uh, like people used to just do it just that way. Then they had to think about how to, how they can improve upon like extracting and like uh, increase the efficiency. So there is a, like uh, there was a big overhaul maybe back in 2008 uh, when the CDP customer data platform and the CRM terms started to come in. Um, so that's that's when like everyone wanted to see the data and that's when people started collecting the data and like generate the data kind of uh, quadrupled in just one year. Uh, so uh, now like we are in a stage that this HDFS and this PySpark and all, and the, all, the only reason is because the data is so massive and we need uh, like such high machines and high, uh, high uh, like configured systems or servers that like it's just basically growing from here. Like ten years uh, later or something, like you will have a quantum computer or something. Then we will have to learn something, some new technology and all. So this is this is like kind of a uh, like SQL is there because it's it's and and let me tell you why we are learning SQL because people have been so accustomed to this and uh, they are so familiar with this concept, even though you have the Python and the PySpark, they're still writing the SQL queries inside that, right? So that's why the SQL has like so much of power. What, what Kumar sir did yesterday, right? Uh, you could do all that without writing a SQL, but they had to embed SQL into executing what the data frame and DF underscore COVID he was trying to do. Um, he, he, he did that using SQL just because people are used to it. Uh, there are there are ways of doing what, what he did without doing the SQL. So that's why that's why like uh, at, at the bottom level, if you understand SQL, rest of them are basically just languages. It's about like how do you want to visualize the data? How do you want to extract the data? How do you want to manipulate the data? And uh, SQL will always be there because this is like the easiest form of like get, uh, getting the data and like uh, uh, getting the structure or uh, separating the data or isolating the data into a structured format. This is something that everybody is familiar with and uh, it's, it's, it's going to stay forever. So to, to, with that, let's, let's start with what the SQL is. Pretty straightforward structured query language. Uh, this basically tells you in, in its name, like it's, it's uh, like the queries that you run on a stru structured uh, database, uh, the language that is required, the, is, that's basically the SQL is. Uh, this, is um, this is used for RDBMS, the Relational Database Management System, and uh, uh, it's important to mention because all the databases now are relational database management system. There are very few that are not. And if like uh, the RDB, RDBMS does not exist, the data is almost transformed into something that can, that gets uh, extracted into the RDBMS system. For an example, uh, what like no SQL that uh, we were talking about on the other day, right? On the, our data engineering call. The, when the data exists in the no SQL database, it's it's basically not usable in the json format it's it's not usable i like that there are there are uh, things that you can do with it like you can you can do it but the way it gets executed is you it's it's just only there to store you actually want to have a structural table or something like a columnized or new, uh, normalized table 
which basically can extract from there and kind of uh, insert the data into a table uh, tabular format that you can understand so that's basically is the relational database management systems and uh, uh, what what rdbms basically does is or or the definition is it's a collection of table and all the tables are kind of uh, like the term relation is are linked with each other they have some kind of a relation to uh, one table to the other so if you have like a to m tables they are somehow in a different kind of schema um, they are, they are uh, bound together they are they are ma uh, married together so you can go from a to m a to f like depending on how the structure is i will go for the structure how the information is stored and how what kind of schema gets created schema gets created for you to uh, basically like look at that data and mix the connection and join and extract the values that you need to so uh, so far all good like everything everyone understand if not just uh, stop me and ask your question yeah okay then i will move on so so this is this is the schema that i was talking about so uh, all the tables that are linked with each other right there are there is a certain format and that format will will go to that directly and the, this is the format like flat model hierarchical uh, network model relation uh, star schema and snowflake so let's look at that like what what it means not this okay flat model flat model is very simple model it's just two like one data one 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 way of collecting the data and only in one table you have two dimensional array that's about it like you are having a transaction and it's not connecting to anything it's just like for an example think of it this way uh you have a uh, uh like you have a grocery store or something whatever you are selling you just need the database for that it's just that's that's about it you are not matching that with in inventory you are not matching that with anything you are just like whatever uh, purchase uh, sale that you are making that is just coming into that table and that's about it and that's what you want to measure like you are you are uh, man managing the data just from the sales perspective and that's that's what it is you're not checking like you are manually doing your inventory you are manually doing your uh, transaction the purchase it's only to track your sale and that's that's what that flat model is so uh, that's that's the very basic model no one uses this. there are like very few instances with this gets implemented even now like at least two tables are there so uh, like that a flat file is not the case anymore uh, i will i will tell you when when it gets a little complicated and when it's get um, a little more structured or get a little more linked then the model is called something else so we'll we'll get to that so so that was flat file model now hierarchical so this one is when you have a, a kind of a child parent relationship with uh, one or the other uh, groups this this kind of model uh, comes into the picture think of this from a like a species perspective right you have a super family which is homo sapiens then you have like animals and like others so mammals and all so it's always one directional it's going from top to the bottom and things are just connected uh, uh, like the child node is connected with just one parent they are not uh, interchanging they are not going left to right they are not connecting with anything else so that's that's basically is a, a hierarchical model where like it's going from top to the bottom uh, with, uh this is this gets used in some cases uh, not a lot uh, it has its own advantages and disadvantage disadvantage of course you can see like you are not able to do connection and if you want to do connection it's it's like very complicated uh, but uh, depending on the used case it's it still gets used in some areas not many and and the reason being is the other models are pretty uh, useful and that's that's why like everyone tries to uh, because they know eventually they will have to go towards that model so no one kind of uses these model anymore the only the legacy companies or legacy teams uh, they are working on this kind of model that's that that who uh, they only use this but not it's it's again not being used anymore 
Okay, network model. This is interesting. So think of the network model this way. It's based on who. Uh, this is this only gets done for security purposes. Just FYI. Um, and reason is you want to uh, isolate data from having multiple connections. And so that if one server kind of gets hacked or one da database kind of gets hacked, it's not impacting the other database. So it only works in a uh, like a very, I would just uh, like government projects and all those kind of things where you want to have like some kind of a uh, uh, security clearance and all those kind of things. That's where it works. And the good example here is a restaurant. Like, here, uh, the network, it means is like the only person who's connecting to like who's who's having a transaction with the other block there, like server that is working with money, uh, restaurant, of course, the, the manager and the food, right? He server is not responsible for looking, uh, working with the cook or working with the cashier, nothing, nothing about that, right? Cashier is just about the money and back to the restaurant. Cashier is not working with the server, doesn't matter how the server did and all. Cashier doesn't care about that. Cashier cares about the, the money or about the transaction. Cook only cares about the food. Cook, cook doesn't care like how the server did and like he picked up the food or nothing. Cook only cares about the food. So this is this is how the uh, network structure gets designed. Uh, it, it like as I said, like it it's it still gets used in like some right some businesses, some areas where you want to have the isolation, and uh, that's that's where that, that's where it gets used. So this is another schema. Like if you have to like develop something for like some client that you are working on, you will have to understand their use case, like what they want to do, and also it will be one of these cases uh, that I'm I'm going through now. Relational model. So this is this is a primary model which basically gets uh, implemented in the companies. Uh, so relational mo model is it's called entity relation model that you are one. Um, uh, one entity is getting is connected to uh, other entity by, by some kind of a relation. Now think of this from a uh, dealership perspective. This is a dealership database and uh, uh, what, what it's doing is it wants to have uh, because the, there are the multiple dealerships and in, inside multiple dealership, you have like one, uh, uh, like it's think of it as like a Ford. You have multiple vehicles over there, right? You want to maintain like when that vehicle came into uh, like my, my inventory, uh, what's the model of that vehicle? What's the model name of that vehicle? What's the production? Uh, what are the features in that vehicle? Uh, do we have any promo with that vehicle? What's the uh, my, uh, MRP for that vehicle? So like all that information. So information is kind of divided into different blocks and uh, uh, vehicle is basically gets linked to something that is very common in, in that whole thing. And that's, that's what basically is uh, driving. Um, what, what this entity relationship is, your one table is going to link with another table and it's not interdependent on, on one master table. And what it's called is like, uh, so the, the key here is the key term that you need to use is your, um, uh, the fact table and dim tables, which, which basically gets highlighted into this, this particular uh, star schema, but it is a initial like kind of definition of, um, or very early stage definition of fact and dimensions. So you have one table and, but the other tables that are linked to that table are basically dimension table. So one table is the master table and the other tables are basically uh, storing the information about that table itself. So I will pause here and see if you have any questions about this. I think no. we are good. Go ahead. No, good. Okay. So now, now this is star schema. Star schema is the most uh, like uh, one of the popular one, and it is a uh, kind of an add on to this, this particular uh, database, the relational model. So relational model, star schema uh, and snowflake schema are kind of based on the same uh, thinking, same framework. Uh, like this is, this is uh, formatted into like a kind of a, a horizontal way and like a vertical way. They wanted to organize it little more and so that's why they came up with uh, this model called star schema model. So this is what that means is the fact and dim model. You will have one master table and just every table will be linked to this uh, table, uh, this fact table. And the tables that are getting created to store that information is dim, dim tables. 
So that that's a very common question. Like in my company, we have the star schema. We implemented this back in 2014. So we we opted for uh, uh, this this particular uh, schema. And one of the reason was Snowflake schema was very new. Like people were didn't know about it. But now actually we have moved into uh, uh, Snowflake schema for like some dash uh, some uh, database. But like uh, my marketing database into uh, star schema. Uh, but my like supply chain database is in, into uh, Snowflake schema. And my master data management is in Snowflake schema. So now, uh, like the companies are moving towards this now. Like whoever is doing uh, now, like in in twenty twenty two, is basically doing into into Snowflake format, which I will cover again. Uh, but uh, like that's that's what the uh, like ideal database structure uh, had been in the past. Like uh, uh, where people wanted to create have one master table and everything is just linked with uh, this table. So. Justin? Yeah. Just in one question, like mm -hmm. you said, the star schema, mm -hmm. uh, there will be only one master table. Is it like, a, is it in a practical scenario? Like, can we have only one master table and all sub tables which are like pointing to that? But it looks yes, different. yes. So because then the master table will be very huge. It's like it will would, would mess up, right? I'm not getting like yeah, how yeah. We, so let's let's look at like, yeah, let's look at the example. I was uh, going to go for the examples. But let's okay. look at some examples. Yeah, that should be. So this is a standardized schema. So th these are the relationships that gets built, like one to one, one to many, and all. So it's it's all being done to solve for these kind of scenario, many to many, and all. So now almost everything is many to many. Uh, but like, let's go to the star schema, right? So star schema is basically in, in this format. You will have just one uh, sales table and every uh, every transaction that is happening for like a uh, transaction that is happening is going to have the information one in this table in, in uh, uh, the term I'm going to use is normalized format. What normalized means is you are going to uh, have keywords for your data. Like here, you are not storing information about the product. You are storing a product key. What product key is like? Let's say you have, you bought Tide from the grocery store, right? And they what they will be doing is they, that uh, that Tide has a product key of one two three four. In this say uh, this data, they will store the product key one two three four. What you will have to do it, you will have to join with the product to figure it out like what the what that product actually is. But this is going to be just one master table about about like all, all the information that are happening. And let me clarify this. So star schema can be for like one segment of the of your business, and there can be another uh, star uh, schema. So for an example, like you are having your uh, sales data into this particular for, uh, star schema format, but you have your own uh, uh, transaction schema or like uh, or. Uh, in supply on logistics schema, right? So those kind of schema uh, and that too is into a star format or some other format or so, uh, other um, structure, it can exist. So, but like for uh, one particular area, one particular department, you are building your schemas in this particular format just to have like in one table and uh, you have the dimension, different dimensions linking it to it. Uh, now, is it like, so one database, is one star schema? Is it something like that? Yeah, yeah. A database. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. So in that case, any mm -hmm. transaction, if it's the, any transactions, think that there is a Walmart. There are daily transactions happening. So for the daily transaction, they will have one database, and anything related to logistics, one more database with one more star schema. Something like that. So, Can I? Yeah, that? yeah. Uh, let me just uh, rephrase a couple of things here. Like, so the database itself is huge, but inside just database, there's something called catalogs. So catalogs. Let me go to that real quick. So like, this is the catalog. So in catalog, how you are uh, structuring the data, that is is going to be in um, in in the in the format that you are talking about. So there is a there is a small difference. Like the database itself can have multiple schemas inside it. So uh, like the database itself is there, but you inside database you are going to have multiple schemas. Like think of is that like you have one C drive, right? In one C drive you are breaking into into and creating your different folders and all. 
So that's that's what it is. Like database is your C drive, and inside that, your mm-hmm. how your party partition uh, partitioning is going to be different. Some some uh, folders that you are creating are basically like nested folders, which has folder inside the folders and all. But uh, like uh, and uh, like so and and some other folder that you are creating is just dumping the data directly. So uh, so th- these two schemas are different, right? So that's your your whole uh, C drive is your database, and inside how you are clustering and creating the folders and like uh, how you are aggregating the data that basically depends on the schema. Okay, it can sit. So it's like two star schema depending on the yeah. schema. It can yeah, have yeah. So, present in the same database. Yeah, and can these two. talk like uh, can they have connection it's yeah. like independent but yeah, they, yeah. They, they can talk uh, most of the time like uh, like like big big companies nowadays right they have they have multiple environments like my company has oracle my company has aws my company has teradata so no, within uh, the star schema within the star once so, yeah so, two yeah yeah so let me uh, yeah i'm explaining i'm, I'm going there so oh, okay so like the these different databases kind of not talk to each other anymore like uh, like aws teradata and all because they want to promote their uh, platform so you have to have some kind of a third party joining the things together or like some kind of you have to create a etl kind of a format uh, which where like informatica or other tools like that or talent or these companies kind of work so that they can bring in like they can ingest the data from different sources and kind of dump it into like one so like all the companies kind of have that uh, nowadays so inside each database like either it's aws either it's uh, uh, this this stereo data mysql microsoft sql oracle and all inside that you can have multiple schemas uh, however you want to construct and uh, all those are like stored into some kind of a way most of the time it, it depends on like data engineer now uh, that's that's what uh, that, that's what they are basically training for to to construct this database into a format that it's usable for the business so you will get these requirements from the business or from like your ctos and all uh, who wants to buy basically give you a requirement oh construct this database into a format in this format and so that the, this will be used by this particular business and this particular area so when you are solutioning for it you have to uh, know about like what's the use cases and how i need to build this uh, uh, like schema and uh, do i need to like uh, worry about like this data is going to be used with another schema in the future or not or is just like this is my requirement and how it's going to be like leverage or like is there a we need to have a export function for it or not and like uh, i mean like we, do we have to use it to another database or not so like those kind of things because there are not only just the 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 info uh, like uh, in, information is uh like the key right now right so like sometimes what happens is you have to talk to the external database as well like the apis that get created so for security reasons you you need to understand like then you might not use this uh, schema you will only use uh, the the uh, network schema right so because you only want to share that one that part of information with the outside party with with some third party that you have to use so you will not in- implement the star schema and you will implement your uh, 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 the uh, network schema and the network schema might be pulling information from another star schema so that's 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 what i'm talking about like there can be multiple star schemas within that uh, database does that make sense now yeah yeah i got thanks yeah, yeah. okay yeah. okay the last one is uh, snowflake schema this is the most important one and uh, this is what all the companies are using nowadays Are, are are moving towards and uh, let me just go to this the, so uh, snowflake schema is kind of an enhancement to this particular schema what it basically like only thing it does is like it's in a star format but a dimension table can also have a dimension table that's the only difference like in this uh, format you can have only one uh, dimension table and uh, you can't have like uh, this thing is going to another key that 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 was uh, they didn't design it that way so in this uh, snowflake schema uh, like what what's happening is this th- like we have one fact table and a dimension table but a dimension table is also uh, linked with another uh, dimension table so uh, like uh, you can see like okay so this is a sales table we have a location key here what that location key is uh, storing the information of c- uh, street and city key and what that city key is linked to another table where it's in- pulling an information for a city key uh this one doesn't have any key so this is only like this is the last uh, final table so and uh, 
just uh, to come full circle for it, right? So, uh, I, so there was, uh, I, okay, yeah, the, these are some examples that we have, like how would you construct a, a database for e-commerce platform? So this one is like, can anyone tell me like what this, uh, this is doing? Like what, what this? Uh, Collecting data from the websites. Yeah, yeah, but like what schema is this? It's a customer. It's, snowflake. it's a snowflake. It's a snowflake because it's, it's making multiple joins. Like it, it's going for one connection to the other and it's, it's free to do. So one table has like this table and this table is connected to this table and this has another table. So this is a snowflake format. So this is what the companies are using nowadays. Like, so let's let's look at this example and and uh, like how how the information the data will flow. That's the most important thing you will you will need to understand how data is like which is the entry point of the data and which is like where all the data is flowing. That's basically the job of data engineer. That's basically the job of data analyst. Like any person who says data, that's basically what they are doing. They, they are trying to understand where the data is coming from and how the data is distributed in their whole uh, environment or whole ecosystem within, within the company. Um, once you have the grasp of that, you will basically have good idea of like how, what you need to do. The, the only thing that's left after that is basically running the SQL queries and uh, like the through the syntax and to extract the data to manipulate the data and all so once you once you have like when you when you go to a company uh, when you when you get get a job in a company just go ask for like they should have this kind of a structure in a visio or like some other document they will have this just ask them like give me the schemas and they will they will be able to give you this once you have the idea where the data is flowing from a to b um, and just start running queries and start doing like uh, like joins and to figure it out how the data is going and you know, like which one is creating duplicate, which one is not creating duplicate and all that information. And and yeah, just the, the most important point. The, the main reason these things get done is uh, in the schemas get implemented so that you don't duplicate your data in, uh, in a format. The, the places where you have to do the duplication you uh, substitute that duplicate duplicate value or duplicate element by a key. So for an example, uh, there are 10,000 pe people living in uh, my, my uh, city in, in Edgewater to 12,000. So for 12,000, do I want to populate uh, city, Edgewater and state in New Jersey for all of them? Or should I create a, a key that basically ties these people together and just populate the key? It's let's say I'm gonna give a, a key, this key one, two, three, four. And this key is what it's going to do is this is going to have its unique value. So for the database to understand and mm -hmm. run queries, it's just going to run the query much faster if I give a key instead of a uh, command of like find Edgewater as a city and, and New Jersey as a state. So that's the advantage of creating these schemas. So you are just reducing the workload, segregating the information and kind of, kind of creating the links. So once if you start creating, like it gets expanded more and more, right? Then uh, it, it is helpful to run queries because the data gets smaller and smaller and like they are blocks and blocks. And it, it's easier to do join than just extract the query. If you are doing the duplication in your uh, uh, tables, then it's, it's not helpful at all. So this is this is one example. There are a few more examples that we can go for, but like I have given you guys the link. Uh, you guys can see from there and see like if, if that makes sense to you, understand like where the data is coming from, what kind of transaction the customer is doing and like uh, will, where the data will flow from and all, all that scenario. So now I will just pause here. Do you want me to continue on this schema or do you want, just want me to uh, move on to the next segment? So, Jatin, I have a question here. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, like, suppose we are creating a table and uh, I don't know, it's like I was trying to do something. So, if we are just adding a column to the existing table already. So, it's making in the database two tables now. One is updated one and one is the previous one. So, 
so i just saying we are not making a duplicate here so we delete the previous one or how we gonna work on that say, say that again what's your used cases no i was saying suppose we have existing table in our database mm -hmm. and we are adding one column to the database like any table like student table we are adding yeah. their location or something so uh, that's already saved and we are adding one more table so now we have two tables one is the uh, with the new column added and one is the old one so is our database going to store the previous one also so or it will delete it itself so it's no no so it won't delete you for uh, deleting a table from the database uh, like it's it's a very uh, it, it's it's very frowned upon nowadays to delete our database but but you in your scenario the what what the company will do is it will archive the database for certain years and after like 14 years or 15 years they will drop the database so that's that's how they that's like uh, to to save yourself from legal trouble that's that's generally how companies do it nowadays even though you have created a copy and you have overwritten like you have like that has become the uh, what you will do is like uh, the older table that you uh, have worked on and created a new table just with extra column mm -hmm. What you will do is you will uh, mm -hmm. save that with underscore backup underscore archive with that particular format, or you will start that with archive underscore whatever the table name was. So that table does not exist okay. anymore. It will just go to the archive, um, and and it will be uh, uh, like stored there for like whatever your company policies are. Maybe like for for my company, I think it is thirteen mm -hmm. years. Maybe if I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, but like for depending on the data, what data you are storing, first of all, like if the data is th that has the customer information, that's where I'm going for. Like it, it will store for 13 years or something. After 13 years, you can drop off. Um, so uh, if it does not have any customer information and it's uh, like, OK, to use your company will have a lenient policy for it. Like, oh, yeah, this is fine. And just, yeah, you can drop it in the next day. So it all depends on like how, how the policies okay. are uh if if it's not like it's just like you have a random table who's storing like information about some uh weird thing then that's you want to add a column and see some manipulation and just leave it your company will say yeah that's that's fine just drop it okay okay so uh, and that like the, in the future it's gonna be like new updated table we never gonna work on the previous table right yeah, yeah. it just uh will be on the arcade right yeah yeah okay so and and let me uh I, I will come into like i will come to like what people actually work on nobody works on table uh nowadays and or if if you are given access i'm i'm talking about from sql standpoint actually uh for data engineering is going to be a different uh use case for uh, uh sql I'm, I'm going to give a different use case for data engineering, you will have access to uh, like creating the tables and deleting the tables and dropping from data engineering standpoint. But for when you are a uh, SQL developer and all, you will you will not have the those access to drop a table or even create a table. You will have to work with your BI team, this data engineering team, to do that. So just and uh, like what you actually work on is views. You don't work on tables. The, you won't have mm -hmm. table access. The views are uh, basically on top of a table and kind of a copy of it, uh, which is which requires like uh, you want like you submit a request to your BI business intelligence team, which creates a view for you, which is an amalgamation of like multiple tables, and they just uh, spit the view out to uh, you and your team to work on to do the analysis and all. This is this is for SQL developer, and uh, the the BI team that is working on is the data engineer that you will work with. So. Uh, he will have the rights to create the view, create the stored procedure and all that. And so that because these views need to get uh, daily refreshes and all. So the, the SQL developer generally works on uh, just the views and they don't have any rights to uh, like create the data or delete the data or drop the table and all. Uh, on the data engineering side, this happens on in certain cases as well. Uh, like very rarely you will have access to drop a table and delete the table. As I'm saying, like these are the legal uh, policies that the company has. Yeah. So whatever, like in, you, there is always going to be a, a data set that will always get stored. Or it's going to be in some uh, data node or block that will always be saved. So you will, you will, I don't think you will ever run a command that will be like delete the uh, table or drop the table. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I 
Okay. Uh, do you want me to continue on the uh, schema or do you just move on to the next? Like everyone understood the schemas? Yes, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Okay. Then let's move on. So yes. this is this is a very simple way of explaining how the D, uh, this DBMS and the programs work and like just blow this up into the uh, HDFS format because what, what this is doing is um, the Hadoop ecosystem, right? The Hadoop ecosystem had the uh, YARN, which, is, which contains resource manager, no, node manager, data node, uh, containers and all that, right? So this is something similar it does, but I have picked a simple example, like you, uh, you are a user who uh, wants to run a job, it goes to programs and like uh, it, it, which connects to the DBMS, looks for the same thing, like who's, uh, which uh, resource is available and all kind of thing. And like, then goes to the environment that you are looking for and then pulls the data from there. And that, that kind of thing happens, which is, which is nobody's going to ask you this kind of question for a, uh, in this kind of environment, unless and until you are like working as a, uh, uh, establishing this and no one establishes this anymore. Like if we, companies do the like Microsoft, Teradata, uh, AWS, they send their engineers to basically build this kind of environment for you. You uh, like same for Hadoop, right? Uh, you are not going to set up a Hadoop there. You are going to work on Hadoop there. So this is how the setup needs to be done. And we, no one does that anymore. Make sense? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Okay, so now SQL environment, once that SQL environment is set up, right, this is this is what you will basically work on. If you are a data engineer, uh, you will work on mostly about the de data definition language, depending on what your role is. Sometimes uh, you get pulled into uh, some data analytics part of it or data science part of it as well. So then you need to understand like everything because you will be creating and like manipulating the data and doing everything by itself. Uh, by, by yourself. So uh, what, what the data, def, uh, so what DDL is, so essentially there are, there are actually five. Uh, in old days, we used to call the, these three. So select was part of our DML, but actually uh, uh, select is DQL, data query language. That's about it. So just people want to be fancy. So they have created like more, uh, this kind of thing. So like this, I've uh, pasted an old picture as well, which basically like uh, select was in DML but people were like, oh, you are not actually uh, manipulating anything over there. You are only just running a query to uh, visualize, like to show and all. So they said like, oh, okay, this is going to be DQL. Um, so like, I will start from the first DDL. Uh, DDL is uh, data definition language. This is used when you are, um, when you are defining your database, when you are creating like the tables, when you are uh, working to uh, establish the schema when you are working to how the data is going to flow and what kind of format and like what kind of uh, data variables, right? Data types are going to be used. All that kind of gets covered into DDL, like creating a table, dropping a table, altering a table, truncate, truncate table. So uh, truncate is deleting, uh, the deleting the rows and keeping the, uh, the data types intact. So that's what truncate is. It is another type of drop, uh, another type of uh, uh, drop where, where you're not deleting a table, you're only deleting the values inside it. So uh, DML is uh, data uh, manipulation language, which, which means you are manipulating the data inside. You want to insert a value, insert data inside that. You want to create, update uh, some table inside it, which will go, will, will go for, for all of these, uh, for, uh, with an example in, in subsequent, uh, subsequent uh, slides, uh, deleting, a well, deleting the rows. So that this is, this is one of the difference that uh, people used to ask. I don't think they, they are going to ask you like, what is the difference between delete and drop? Uh, drop is like dropping the table from the database itself. Deleting is uh, deleting some rows, but not the table. So that's, that's how like uh, it works. Like the, the, uh, you are, you're not, deleting the table over there, you're deleting the, uh, uh, the, the schema of the table or the, the table name will still exist. It just, when you, when you do the delete, uh, the values or the, the content inside the table will uh, delete it. And what is the difference between truncate and delete? That's going to be another question. So uh, Google that yourself and figure that uh, answer out. So that's our homework. Uh, DCL is uh, uh, data control language. This is like 
um, if you have created a data set and you want to have the admin rights, right? Like you want to, uh, uh, this this data is only readable to uh, like this particular audience or like who are this, these kind of developers. Uh, that's that's what the control uh, language is. So you can grant access, you can revoke access. So that's that's what it is used for. Uh, commit and rollback is uh, uh, like when you when you run a commit command, it's basically executing and storing the values. Uh, if you don't have the commit, what it does is it's not going to store the values. It's going to do the function it's supposed to do, but it's not going to store the value. It's just going to commit to a job. It's going to run to run a job. But if you have not uh, uh, executed like what it is store or what it's not going to store and all, it's just like it's not going to do that. So commit only runs the job. That's that's the whole purpose. It roll back it, roll back the job. Um, you will not have access to this. Uh, you will only have access to this when you are writing your own volatile or the temp tables. That's about it. Uh, but uh, like you won't have access to this. If you don't have access to this, you won't have access to this because you are not creating uh, the da database and all right. So uh, or cre creating the table. So uh, you won't have access to grant and all. Only the tables that you create yourself or like as an admin. That's uh, or or the BI developer on the data engineering side, you will have access to like all of this basically. So any any questions here? And the, I have, I have yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, no, I'm saying we are, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. And I have, I have pasted a image here, like uh, so that you can understand like where these commands are get are, are being used. Like DDL is for the physical design of the of the database. DML is for the implementation of the uh, database. DCL is for the maintenance of the database. Think of it this way: like, okay, what's what's the purpose of having these? Like, what 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 it's doing? Uh, that's that's about it. So let's move on. This is this is pretty simple. I, I think this is uh, data type are uh, same across all the platforms. You will you will have some like uh, platform here and there. Like here, um, uh, it's being mentioned like Oracle has Glob and Nclob, but like the ones that get used are basically uh, very common ones. String, uh, which stores a character, or uh, so char and var char. Uh, char can only uh, store a fixed length uh, of the uh, values but uh, varchar is variable and can store any kind of value and it, that's fine character can only store a uh, character from the the, uh, the the character set that is available to them uh, numeric is uh, simple it's end uh, then there is float then there is a uh, desk uh, for I, I forgot what it's it's called like there, there are there are multiple uh, 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 numeric data types that that you can use to store number values uh, float is when you have a decimal, int won't have the decimal. So int will have just zero and absolute values, exact numbers. Float will have uh, uh, the values after decimal as well. Um, uh, temporal is, uh, is, people don't use temporal anymore. It's about like uh, more, the more important one is the uh, timestamp, uh, the the date, date uh, as a data type. So all database have their own, uh, data types like uh, BigQuery, which is by Google, have a different kind of format for the time, date and time. You can just Google like what's the uh, time data type for uh, BigQuery. You will see what Google is using, what Microsoft is using, what Teradata is using, like all of them are using a different uh, uh, time, uh, especially, specifically for time. For some reason I've seen like every company has their own way of uh, doing that. Like. Uh, in Teradata, you can subtract date minus uh, date A minus date B. It's going to work totally fine. But if you try to do that in BigQuery, it's not going to work. You have to do date date underscore diff or date diff uh, parenthesis and then date A comma date B. So everyone has their own way of doing it. But like, uh, just wanted to uh, uh, put this here. So that you can go back and study this yourself or whatever database that you are working on, like it's going to have its own data types. There are some journal ones. So uh, read just any database or any like uh, data types used in Python, data types used in SQL, MySQL or something. Just read one and it will give you an idea how, how things work. The rest, everything else is just the syntax. Okay, let's move on. Okay, 
so uh, this is this is a journal statement create table and uh, the reason i've put it over here is because uh, as a data engineer you might uh, use this like uh, when you are creating a uh, data so you see here like i have used this this commit uh, command uh, then we have uh, constraint and all so i, I will go over these uh, afterwards but commit is again like this is uh, this is your uh, dql uh, uh, the not the dql the tcl uh, tcl command but this is just a simple syntax of how you want to create a table and uh, we all have created a table right when when uh, kumar garu gave the uh, the homework we the initially on the top of it in ssms you had to create a table you had to put the value insert values with with the uh, with the values that was given uh, by him in the in the table so this is pretty pretty standard pretty uh, all across in all the data database it's everyone follows the same thing so what what do you have to do is the syntax is create table write the table name uh, create the definition definition is uh, uh give the column names and what the data type is going to be and if there are any constraints to it uh constraint is like uh you want to apply the rules uh say you have a something called id right id ca cannot be null so what you are going to do right is id not null id uh numeric or int not null so not null is your constraint so it cannot be null uh let's say name um, name uh, var care 20 uh, and uh, uh, it it's unique you cannot have a uh, another person with the same name so that's what the constraint is so that's how you start designing your tables uh, and uh, that's that's how the ta a table gets created so it's going to be very rare for you to do it there is going to be some some guy who's working on it maybe on the data engineering side you may have to if if you are so data engineering has like if you are uh, working for another internal client then you might have to do this kind of work but most of the time like these things are already set up but like maybe i'm wrong here because as kumar said right uh, 80 percent of the companies have not uh, established uh, hadoop ecosystem right so if those companies are migrating towards uh, hadoop then you might have to create tables and do all that uh, uh, all this this work for them so i might i may be wrong of saying like you may you may never have to do it depending on the job like if you if you are going for a company which wants to implement a hadoop uh, system and all and sees you have a six years or something experience then you will have to do uh, this kind of work okay so uh, let's move on uh, in in following slides like i'm going to uh, create tables and like uh, show examples of creating a table and having a uh, kind of a how do you insert values into that table this is just a very easy one um, like very very simple format like that's that's how the uh, tables and the uh, joins or like the or the connections entity relationship gets built into uh, table and that's that's how the uh, data flows uh, so i will give the example of it so that it's it's uh, available for you to kind of refer back when if you want to look so this is this is what i was going for right in in a customer table uh, you have customer id uh, number 110 this means uh, it's customer id is a numeric it's going to have a numeric uh, value and it cannot be null same thing here uh, customer name var cat 25 characters and it cannot be null it will store an address um, it will store a city it will have the state as a character too um, so oops it was going to have a state it's going to have a postal code varcar2-9 uh, uh which is which is wrong it needs uh, 9 okay do, do we know why it is 9 because the postal code because of the postal code only 9 characters yeah but the postal code is of 5 characters right having it's having alphabetical uh, letters also no uh so in us in us you have a nine character every zip code is actually a nine character your uh first five are the zip codes and the full last four characters are zip plus four and zip what the function of zip plus four is, is like in 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 my city like in my my town here i have a one zip code but like uh the the 
zip code is divided into some kind of a block so that they can have like U USPS figure it out and all those kind of things. So every every kind of uh, depending on your how how big your town is, you're going to have a zip plus four. Maybe for like my town, my zip code, my zip code and zip plus four is basically the same thing. But uh, for like different towns, it can be like you you have uh, one zip code but multiple zip code plus four. Got it? Yep. Okay. So uh, primary key. I will I will go over what what a primary key is. Um, so this this basically is establishing a index. What index is doing is it's uh, it's a uh, couple of things. And the whole reason for having index is it's going to optimize your query. It has to be unique. It has to be uh, the most diverse uh, or most uh, easy to read. Most of the time, it's the first column in your table. Uh, that's what people establish as a primary key. Uh, it's, it's just a standard rule. It doesn't mean that you have to do that. Uh, you can have like customer ID can come uh, third as an example, and you can still specify here. But uh, as a best practice, a lot, uh, uh, lot of engineers try to do like your first column is going to be a primary key. Uh, because what happens is there is, a, there is a default in certain database, there is a default. If you don't mention a primary key, your table itself will consider your first um, first column as the primary key. So let's say for an example, you created a table and it, it allows you some in some table, like so you can have a constraint which will not allow you to have a, a table if unless you mention the uh, primary key. But in some database, you can create a table and you, if you don't mention a, a primary key, it will assume your first column is the primary key. So it will assign it itself. And if your first column key has duplicate and it's it's like it's uh, very ambiguous and it's all your uh, database is going to run crap like it's it's going to it's not going to uh, execute queries fast you will have to first is establish a primary key and you have to figure it out what's the right primary key for me to um, establish so that when when somebody runs a query and makes a join on this primary key the output of the data is going to be really fast oh Okay. Uh, for order T, uh, what, what this is, uh, like order table, having your order ID, order date. Uh, so this is, this is what I was talking about. Like you are, you are going to have date as a, uh, uh, date as a data type. And, uh, it's, it's saying it's default to system date. So if you don't have any value for the order date, it's going to install and it's going to default to the system date. So, uh, that's, that's what the data type here is. So uh, now like you have, you have established a primary key and you have established a foreign key here. What that means is if, uh, and foreign key here is customer ID. What that mean, means is if you have a customer ID that let's say it's uh, this, this customer ID in this table, customer T is one to 1000. Now, if you start, you enter a, uh, try to insert a value, which is 1001, it will not allow you because you have mentioned this foreign key needs to present in this table only then it can be present in this table. So when you are trying to execute a, uh, like you have, you have create, created this as, as a rule for this, that any, uh, any customer ID that gets inserted into this table needs to be into, inserted into this table. So what foreign key is doing it, it's creating a relationship with this table. And, and making sure that the conditions are always met. So that's the whole purpose of foreign key is. Make sense? Yes. Yes. Can you just repeat it? Uh, foreign key concept. For the, for the primary key, foreign key. Okay. So foreign key, you see, like we have mentioned customer ID here. So the reason for having a customer ID is, let's say for in this particular uh, table, I have uh, one to hundred records, right? Just to, uh, and each ID has like one, two, three, four, up till hundred. Now in order T, someone tries to insert uh, data which says your or customer ID is uh, 200. And uh, if, if it sees that, okay, uh, this customer ID is 200, but all my uh, customer data has only one to hundred values, how then uh, customer ID equal to 200 can be valid. So what it will do is it will throw an error and it will say like your foreign key excuse me, your data is not present in the uh, reference table, which is customer T. 
So what it will do is it will uh, fail your job of saying that, okay, insert a value of like order ID XYZ, order date of like uh, 7-13-2022 and customer ID of 200, it will not execute. It will say like the data is missing from this table. So they, this the customer ID, if you want to insert in this table, needs to be present to this table always. We are developing a relationship between uh, the customer T, customer ID too, with the order table, customer ID. Yeah, so the relationship is there, right? Customer ID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm if, just if telling the, whoever is asked, so I'm just trying to explain yeah. the easy way. Yeah, so the, the, you are, you are, the relationship is going to be there once you have the customer ID here. You are actually creating a rule or you are actually creating this constraint that this needs to exist in this table. Otherwise, like if you don't mention it, the entity is going to be there, but this table is going to be kind of like, uh, you can enter the data without having dependency on this table. You are creating a dependency on this table. That's what this is doing. It's creating a dependency for using foreign key. Okay, thanks, got it. Uh, same thing here, uh, product table, you have product ID description, product uh, this, now here we have created a constraint called check, which is checking like uh, if the product finish in these values, only then it's going to do. If like, let's say you try to insert a value of uh, uh, some other tree, let's say you have a teak or some, some wood, right? Some other wood, uh, it will not allow you to do it. So that's how you uh, start. Once you start creating the database, you need to understand what your constraints are and all. So that's that's what it, it's it's doing. Just uh, this is just a, for reference so that like you understand like how the tables and how the database database gets created. And then uh, you are establishing this as a product ID. That's about it. Uh, <laughs> then you have a order table, um, order line. So you have order ID, product ID, which is bringing data from here and here and what your order quantity is. So you have multiple constraint on this, like it's dependent on like order ID needs to be present in this table, product ID present into this table. You this this uh, this database basically cannot run if the information is not available into this one table. So think of it this way. This is a very good example. You, you, if you are doing a uh, you are running a grocery business, you can't enter a sale um, uh, a, a sale item if you don't have it in the inventory. If you have the inventory only, then it can read into the sale, right? So that's how you create the depend dependency. So like, so no one tries to steal or no one tries to like manipulate the data. So that's how the uh, dependencies or these um, uh, rules get created to, to make sure to control what you are trying to do with the table. Make sense? Yes. Any questions, anyone? Okay. Uh, Am, am I going too fast or this is okay? No, it's good actually. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. good. Okay. So now alter table. Uh, so once uh, this is this is what Suganda was asking, right? If you want to um, alter a table, add a column and all, uh, what you do is this is this is I've given a syntax and here on the right hand side is, is an example. Uh, so like you, but you will run this command alter table and uh, whatever you are, uh, whatever you are the function that you are trying to do. So here is an example I have given like alter table customer T add column uh, and uh, the column is going to be customer type with the bar care of this and commercial. So uh, Suganda, uh, I, I don't know if you, uh, the scenario you said was, uh, if, if you know what you are doing and like, uh, doing it right, you will not create a copy of it. What you will do is you will alter the table. But as Kumar Garu said, right, it's not the best practice. What uh, what the team will have you do is, or what, what you should actually do is, you should create a copy of this customer underscore T table, update, alter that table, and then just uh, archive customer underscore T table. And then yeah. after 13 years, you will just maybe like drop table customer T. Make sense? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. So this is this is a pretty straightforward example of like altering a table, right? Um, insert commands. Insert we have already done a couple of times, right? Through homework uh, that uh, Kumar gave. 
So uh, the the left on the side it's a syntax, right on the side is, is an example. Actually, this one is both an example, and uh, I've not mentioned syntax because I think we have already done it. So, but but this tells you the syntax, right? Uh, you insert into whatever the table name is values, how whatever the structure or of your table is, or the data uh, or your uh, data types or the columns that are there. All the columns needs to be mentioned, and all the column needs to be uh like separated by comma and like have the have the value if you have an and one more column in it and you haven't uh like inserted a null or whatever you want to leave it's going to it's not going to install it correctly uh this is another example which is uh, a good example gets very commonly used so in uh, uh insert into uh, this ca underscore uh customer table so this means i'm creating a california uh, just a table for california california customers and because the structure is same and everything is same, I'm copying this data just from where customer underscore T table and customer state is equal to CA. So if you have this, uh, if you have a create table CA underscore customer T and all, all that already created and you run this command, it will copy the data from customer and underscore T table where the state is California and it will insert into this, this particular one. This gets very commonly used. Um, so like, uh, in, in the previous example, right, when you're altering the data, what you will do is you will create one, uh, another table through create table, uh, and you will have uh, whatever the name of that table, and you will run this command of whatever you want to do. And you will then add a column to the new table that you have created, and then you will rename the, the older table. So, so that like, that's, that's the, the you will. I'm I'm just explaining the logical step that how you will be doing it, right? How do you? You're telling that to create a duplicate a copy of that table, and we can alter that table by yeah. That so table. like uh, yeah, how do you create a copy of a table, right? There is no command of copy. So what you will have to do is you will have to create a uh, uh, create table with the schema of the same, like whatever is in in the table that you want to copy from, and then you will insert this command where select star from customer T. So what it will do is it will bring everything from there into a new table. And then you will rename in this table and then later you can drop. So that's that's how the copy works, right? There is no command called copy. So that's how you basically transfer the data or migrate the data from one table to the other. Make sense or do you, do you want me to explain this a little further? Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. Any, anyone else? Yeah, could you please explain again? Okay. So uh, the previous example, which I was saying that, uh, how do you, uh, with, with Suganda asked, right? You created a, uh, you want to add a column to the table, existing table, and uh, how, how do you do that? So the best practice in the industry is, there, there is a simple way of doing it. Alter table and add column, and you, you execute this, right? It will do the job. But the best practice is, what you will do is you will, create a table that you want to like, um, let's say there is a table called a, uh, where you have, where you want to add a column, but uh, let me actually do this. So I have a table a create a where I have the, I have the information and I want to update a column here, uh, add a column here in this, right? How do I do it? What I will do it. I will create a, column B, uh, create table B, copy the data from A, rename B, rename A to A archive, rename B to A. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. And how do you, how do you do this command? Right. You, you understood create command, right? That's pretty, pretty simple. Uh, mm -hmm. and like, how do you add a column that's, that's here. Right. You add a column through this command using alter command right but you don't want to do that you have best practice 
you create a table B, you copy the data from A, rename A to A archive, rename B to A. Make sense? Ask again if you if you didn't get it. I I'm, I can explain again. In creating B table, we are adding extra column also, and then copying the. Uh, yeah. A. Cre uh, yeah. Let me do that. Create B with the with a new column. Copy the data from A. Insert values in new column. That's how you will be doing it, right? Because you want to copy the data from A and insert values for in a new column, right? Which might be coming from another table, which is going to have like insert this from another table, right? Uh, one quick question here. So mm -hmm. when we are inserting the values to the new column in the table B, yeah. uh, think that it's coming from some file or anywhere like, um, yeah. what is the like best pro practice we follow to insert? Is so, it like? Yeah, that's a, uh, I think I should have an insert example here, right? In this, like here you are come, taking a data from uh, customer T equal to CA. So let me, let me do this. So this is coming from uh, table A. No, for the new column. This yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so what the used case is going to be, let's say uh, your uh, data A is coming from XYZ. Uh, but the new column information is coming from uh, file MMM, right? So what you will do is you will run a command which will say insert into uh, B select star, uh, actually it's not select star, uh, you will have a, uh, you will have to uh, create insert in values for that particular column. So you will have to specify which column you need to enter the value and uh, where you are pulling that from. I don't remember the, the syntax for it, but like that's, that's, uh, that's what you will be using. Okay. No, no. So what happens like um, if there is a older data for the A, there would be corresponding in the newly added column no yeah i think that you have to be having a new column yeah so Let's call it x uh, so what happens to the older rows for that co the column value for the older rows column value the column is new or you are saying so older uh, values old... will have as a null value what happens usually the yeah, older yeah. date might have null. yeah so older, older column date like once you, you get you, null value for this yeah when column. you create a column it's basically going to have a null value for it yes okay yeah so when then you, you add the column okay. Yeah. Okay. so in that case then what we will be i'm just a little confused what where, where we will be loading the data for which against which row for so all the rows for all the rows like wherever that data needs to be populated you, that's what you will be doing for all the rows so that insert command is going to be like oh, you are only doing it for like x rows or y rows then then uh, your insert command is going to be little complicated just inserting it for all of them which is which is not the best practice you will not have a null value in any of the fields there are very few instances where you will have a column where you have a null value what they try to solve for that is you will have a, a binary relationship with that table what that means is you will have a like um it's not going to have a null it's going to have uh one or zero like yes or no and all that kind of information it's going there are going to be if if you are going to have null in that they will ask you to create a key and that key will match to another table ah uh, exactly that's what i was saying like uh, how will it will know like which row has to go to which row if you are inserting the new from the file or somewhere no yeah yeah so that, otherwise it's like yeah there yeah. will be a key or something defined yeah right? yeah there, there will be a key like there will be a like you will have the the commands the, the syntax or it's going to be different and that's what you will be using uh, uh you want to where you want to update make sense mm, i'm just thinking like how we actually like how we tap it because hey. update is something which will give only the for a particular value right yeah, yeah. particular maybe, row 
So if uh, you are updating from multiple rows for that file which is coming, what I'm thinking is, data, what I'm thinking is, you might be able to use update statement over there as well because what will have is you will have update underscore t and then set product price is equal to whatever. Like what this is, let's say this is a new column that you are doing. So in this new column you just added and you have that and you're just going to the where product ID is equal to this. That's how you will be doing. That's another way of this, doing it. This then, if it is like multiple rows, then we have to do it in an iterative way, something like that. Yeah, no, yeah. What, yeah, what yeah. we're saying is like we select uh, all the old information in the existing columns. Whatever the extra column added, we we put this update uh, and uh, for example, uh, the city Texas, we added extra column on the next to the next to the um, uh, city column. Then we put a condition like update where city is equal to Texas 75035, update this value to the new column. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. that is yeah. for like particular, if the values itself, like if we, the other day Kumar sir was saying, no product description, product will be there. The each product description will be different. Yes, you can't yes. Update you will in have one to multiple times, yes. That's, That's what they said, Kumar sir also said the same thing. You have to enter manually to the new column data. Yeah. Oh, we have to do it. Oh, manually. Okay. Yeah. So you will have to write update command every single time for like each uh, query, each uh, where condition that you have. The most uh, the example that I can think of is when when uh, when a state kind of launches a, a first three characters of your phone number, right? The phone numbers what you have right now it pro provides a location to you, right? With with the first three characters of your phone number, you can tell which state it belongs to. So it is very rare for that to change. Only what I, what what gets done is it gets added. Like every year, like okay, Alaska came with some two one four phone number or something, or uh, like uh, California just added fifteen phone numbers in last five years. So what it will do is like if you are maintaining a table, what you will do is where update um, update phone code set uh, phone phone id or phone first key equal to 515 i'm just making that up where state is equal to california so if if you have done it like to multiple areas you will have to write that for each state and for each uh, each code okay i got it i was like thinking in the other way like getting the file and uploading in one go which is not a like <laughs> the real scenario i was there, there may be a way i i i'm i I will put that in a parking lot because I, I want to think through like if there is a there is a complicated uh, scenario uh, like if we want to solve for that how how would we do it there there might be a way which I'm not aware of right now I can't think of uh, maybe I've done it I, I don't remember but uh, mm. like I don't know that's what is it a real real it's a practical scenario I'm just... it is a practical scenario like we update it all the time i've done it very many times but i like what i when, what i do is there is a case when statement and all so uh -huh. I, I use case when equal to this case when equal to that you can you can create a new column using a case statement right which i will go through so i'm, I'm uh -huh. thinking like where actually i have uh, implemented so give me one second I have uh -huh. the... okay so like case statements, right here, when you are saying like you have, if uh, this is a new column that gets created insert, inserting a value, you can use when statement to do that as well. If you have multiple scenarios, right? Multiple areas, multiple mm -hmm. things that you are saying, I can say when, uh, uh, when, call, uh, when state is equal to California or no, when uh, state is equal to California, then uh, 212, uh, this like whatever the phone that I need to add. So that will, the values will show over here. So there are, there are multiple ways it can be solved for. Okay. Got so uh, just remind me to uh, like talk about this when we, when uh, the scenario that you're talking about, when we come to case, this case statement, because I think what, what you are saying, it can be solved through this easily. Okay. 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 Usually when we get the necessity, then only we will create the column name, right, Vidya? So for example, a business started a new product. So they, then they want to include that new product details with the existing table. Then only we, we will start. Uh, yeah, but what I'm thinking is like, think that there would be new products, you said. Those hmm. new products, are, if they are in like, <laughs> I don't know, like if they are at like 200 products, then for the product description, if of all 200, we have to sit and update, no? So I was thinking. 
you can you can do that with case statement i'm pretty sure like you can do it with case statement because i, I have so done it each case i have to keep on updating is there oh yeah yeah for sure for sure and and the yeah, for each case but but the cases are generally groups right it's not like you will have one individual mm -hmm. statement for each of them no, no. we are going to have one what i'm saying is the, the product example the scenario is a product obviously each product will have different description and the id so in that case it will not go by group no that's what <laughs> what i'm thinking would be a not a practical one that's what i was i'm assuming so yeah. each product yeah we can't but... group in that way so yeah i'm just thinking <laughs> if there would be any yeah. I don't know, like, <laughs> is it a, like, a, I'm just, it's a, like a way. I'm thing pretty that... sure like it's, it's solvable. So like if, if think, yeah, of, I should. think of a scenario and just like send it on the WhatsApp group, maybe then like we can brainstorm and uh, try to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. No. Uh, let's move to the next one. Now, like this is like so far what I've basically taught is, um, uh, Kind of the basics and try to have understanding of what the SQL is and all that, all that areas. But now is actually from this and uh, forward is going to be like what you actually do uh, in a job and what you actually uh, will work on and like uh, what are the queries and how do you write the queries and like all those uh, ideas. So like this is uh, first is select statement. Select has uh, this this select statement has an order of execution. What that means is when you are right and the why this order of execution is important because when you are writing the query uh, you need to understand like if you are if you are not providing the right conditions it's going to uh, it's going to take a long time for it to execute so you are going to have uh, from uh, like the joins uh, or the from just a table the first like it will when when you are uh, writing uh, when you are writing the query and executing it think of it this this order because first it will pick the table, then it will go for the where command so that it can uh, uh, sub, uh, compress the data and only pick what it needs to. Then it will have group by so that it understand like what you are uh, grouping the, if you are using a group by as a function and you're trying to uh, aggregate some values or not. And then having is kind of a where condition on that group and then uh, applying the windows function and then selecting is the columns that you are asking it to call to to display and then running the other uh, uh commands which distinct is like another one like but next to mostly people do is order by and last is limit and offset which is used in uh, what you want to do for displaying so this is basically the order of execution so when you are writing it just keep this in mind so that your your queries are uh like they're they run fast otherwise what will happen is if you write write like poorly some senior will basically look at and will understand okay this person does not have a idea of like how to write a query so when you are writing a query uh, just keep this 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 in mind uh, just google's sql query order of execution uh, it will give you like what the how you should be doing it so it's it's pretty straightforward uh, i'm assuming everyone understands like these select is going to pull list of columns from is going to pull the table where is going to be the conditions and the group by is going to use for the uh, summarizing the data or aggregating the data um, and having is uh, like applying the condition on that group by uh, that that you're using an order is going to be used by, for sorting uh, order by is like uh, ascending or descending I have one question in this one. Yeah. Like, uh, can we add? Uh, uh, is there any limit that we can add uh, only three, uh, like where group by having, or we can add everything, or we can't add together? Like in, in a query, no, can we can add, add where add, group? Yeah. Say, like, uh, I want to understand the term add means you like you want to have multiple where conditions. Yes, M not multiple like a. I want to select a star from something where uh, and group by and having uh, uh, something like yeah, yeah, all... you, can, you can do that. You can, like, yeah, you can do all of this in one query. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So like when you're writing select star from this, so like select star from select whatever uh, statement from where state is equal to California group by uh, gender is equal to male having uh, like or like or not group by uh, number of kids having uh, size of uh, like number of kids greater than two 
order by whatever you want to uh, sort the data on. Jitin, uh, one question here. This group by and window should have same level of execution, this um, priority, right? Uh, windows generally. I'm not assuming. Usually, generally, I don't know. Like, I have never used group by and window together. So, so just do, do, you, do you know what window function is? This is a partition which we are talking. Some... Yeah. So, so window function actually there is there is a huge range of windows function. Group by like if if you are let's say you are not using a windows function, right? Let's say you are completely removing the windows function and just you are doing a group by. Let's say you are doing a count star comma uh, gender from this table, so you don't even have a Windows function, right? Okay, okay. You're not aggregating anything. You're not doing anything. Oh, okay. It's just count then, star then and you just want to see, uh, right? Oh, okay. I was thinking only about the over clause. Okay, we have some aggregation. Yeah, over clause is part of the Windows function, but it works on uh, and and the the axis that it works on is different. So that's why, like, when you are writing a query. Uh, group by gets executed before uh, Windows function, but uh, when you have actually when you have a Windows function, it's a very rare scenario when somebody is using a group by. You are trying to grouping the data based on the Windows function. You you won't be even writing a group by. There are very rare scenarios. If you are writing a group by in a in a Windows function and below the Windows function, uh, group by will get executed first. So that okay. is also a part of a solutioning. When you are writing a query, you need to understand like. Uh, it's going to sum at this particular uh, uh, using a, this Windows function, and you already have a group by at the bottom, so you need to understand how it's going to aggregate the values. Okay. Okay. So now next, uh, ten percent, ten SQL operations basically covers eighty percent of your data manipulation. If you have grasp on these ten, then uh, you will have a very good understanding of. Uh, like how the SQL works. There are like only twenty percent of data manipulation. You will you might have to like Google and figure it out. Like how it's it's doing. Uh, the first one is limit, um, and it it has just recently become popular. So that uh, like how, because uh, because of AWS and uh, Microsoft, right? The way they charge customers is basically what's the size of the query it needs to compute. Let's say you have one billion in a in a table. If and you are only bringing uh, like uh, and you are running a like extreme query, just you you are doing a select star just to see uh, what that table uh, what that table contains. If you do select star and ha it has ten billion rows in it, it's going to cost you around like five bucks or seven bucks just to run that query because the table is huge. That's how AWS makes money, right? That's that's how. They charge you for like uh, having the size and having the execution. For each execution, they they basically charge the company. So a limit has become like very popular in recent days, like pe because people companies are like, okay, why are we like paying this much of money for just a simple executions and all? So you try to limit your output and try to see the output uh, based on uh, like some some sample data that you need. Teradata by itself has a limitation that even if your query has like 20,000 rows, I'm just making that number up, uh, 20,000 rows and you, uh, it will stop at 2000 and it will ask you, do you want all the 20,000 or do you want only 2000? The advantage of that is at 2000, once it, it's, it's, it has compiled 2000 rows for you, it will not do the calculations further. It, it has just created a sample for you and it will just send you the, that sample. If, uh, uh, it, if, if you say it's 20,000, you want to bring all the 20,000 with all the columns, it's going to take extra time and it's going to cost you, cost you more. So that, that's the, that's the reason limit has become like really popular nowadays. Now distinct is like, if you say select distinct, uh, 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 distinct, uh, gender or something, right. It will only bring, like, if you have, uh, like a huge table and you want to see what distinct value exists in that particular table. Uh, unique values that exist in that table, you will run this command to figure it out. Like what, what kind of, uh, it's called explore, explore, exploration data anal analysis. So you are exploring like what kind of values it contains for, for an example, like uh, gender is male and female, right. And there, there can be more. So you, you, you want to make sure your data is, uh, what, what your data contains, you basically figure it out through distinct, like what your, uh, what's the range of the values that exist in that, uh, uh, column. 
uh, then aggregation is the sum, count, min, max, like all those kind of uh, data that generally used with the group by, mostly used with a group by. Uh, then you have a group by condition, which is basically categorizing the data and clubbing the data and rolling up. That's that's what the term is like rolling up data and uh, summarizing and like spitting out like whatever, whatever the uh, uh, the thing that you need. Uh, one of the question that generally gets asked is like the the advantage of having a group by is it it all also provides you a unique values on the uh, column side of it because it's doing the aggregation you can't have the same value with uh, with the aggregation right we can't, you can't have the same categorization and uh, different values the categorization is going to be one and it's going to like summarize it so group by also kind of serves that purpose and if you want to see like uh, select uh, um, male select count star comma gender then it's going to tell you male uh, female and what how many records it's having to so uh, people generally use group by uh, just to understand like wh how what the size of my data looks like with what kind of uh, distribution against that column that's what the group function of group by is where is conditional where you are basically uh, creating the boundaries or creating the conditions where like it needs to satisfy the, those conditions and only then it will execute the query only then it will bring that data having is the having the condition on the group buys uh, the the you can't say like uh, uh, like if you want to have conditions on the group by data like where male and female and all those kind of things you will have to uh, like uh, uh, like when you want to have conditions on group by, you will have to use having for it. You can't just use a group by or a pair condition with a group by. If you want to have a filter on group by, is 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 being done through having. Order by is again sorting and um, ascending and descending order. Join. Uh, I will go through that in the advanced concept. Uh, I send the document on the WhatsApp where like you have like how do you run the joins, inner join, outer join. Uh, full outer join. Uh, another concept here is union and union all, which is also uh, has become like a lot of lot popular these days. But uh, like uh, most other things will be will be done through join. Uh, Windows function. Uh, uh, what someone just talked about, like a uh, row number uh, over partition by uh, whatever column that you give. Uh, your rank, um, the sum, and uh, like all those functions that you want to do on a, on a particular group of data, that's what you use the Windows for, Windows function for. And like uh, like is uh, when when you don't have, when you actually, uh, but this is very common now, uh, if you don't know, let's say like uh, Malika we have here, right? Uh, Malika uh, uses two names. Um, I, I forgot, like uh, I think uh, Naga Malika and Malika. So in certain, uh, let's say she goes to a dealership or some shopping or something, and she gave this name called uh, Malika and some other transaction she gives Naga Malika. We know like she's using this, this name is interchangeable. So what you do is you uh, use like as a condition and you do use percentage sign before Malika so that it, whenever it contains like uh, anything before Malika, it will also pick and uh, like, if, if you give a uh, percentage Malika percentage, it will pick anything she gives after Malika as a name as well. Uh, so that's that's the uh, use of uh, like statement. Uh, people are using uh, Mal uh, like as a, as a standard now because the data is coming into a lot of different format. Like uh, your first name is uh, sometimes inserted in your last name. Uh, your last name is inserted in your first name. Uh, like the, when, when the data is like fluid, that's what we call. Uh, we, we use a like statement equal to is like if uh, if the first name is equal to this means that value needs to be satisfied as it is it's if it's uh, if it's a little bit flexible like you have an extra space or something it will fail so there, there are there are there is a um, there are there are best practices around it and like how people pick the name and all like you you, uh, you uh, trim the data this means you remove the space you uh, uppercase or lowercase the name and then you use the like statement to match it that's that's how generally people use it same thing with the phone numbers phone numbers can be just 10 characters or it can be three character dash three character dash four characters so there are like a regex commands to do it but uh, like there are there are uh, people have solved it using like and all those statements uh, so uh, generally that's what that's how you use the like for so i will stop here and see if you have any questions No. Nope. Okay. 
uh someone posted this uh, uh tutorials point but uh, i i uh, i've i've seen tutorial point before so but i've uh, specifically picked the syntax page for it uh because you will have all the examples is for sums that i that i didn't even uh like cover for example like i didn't go for like what the syntax is right so you can just pick from here and see like what the what how the syntax is so it it covers almost all of them so this is the like that i was talking about uh that's how you use it and like uh, order by and all the all those things so this this basically covers almost all of the uh all of the scenarios all of the uh, syntaxes uh, this is uh, that's somebody, really helpful that's really helpful we can copy and paste and we can yeah, change yeah. copy and paste substitute the value and you will you will get it so i think uh, malika you were asking about this right this 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 is an example like it's using some from yeah. table where condition group by having an arithmetic function so you can you do all of that in one query oh, thank you okay so do that um, um jatin yeah uh, i have a question yeah. why do we use insert uh, what, uh, what's the difference between alter and insert if it's doing the same both the function are doing the same job alter is be... alter no no the both are not same alter is about the table alter is you are uh, not changing you are not touching the data inside it alter is you are altering the uh, the definition of the table so if you look at this right alter exists in the ddl and insert exists in the D dml so alter is only okay. updating the data data uh, the table and inserting is inserting the value you are manipulating the data inside okay got it thank you okay so now uh, I, I kept some time for hands on, but I think I will move to advanced SQL queries because th though these are the main ones. So uh, hands on time is kind of a homework and maybe we can schedule another session just to do some hands on query and like uh, maybe like talk about the homework or something and uh, do it hands on uh, in, in another session. Uh, but if people needs to drop because it, it's eight or five, we can come to advanced con concept in uh, some other class. What do you guys think? Yes. I want yeah. to go that advance a little bit, at least joins we can finish because I'm waiting for that joins. <laughs> so, uh, any, anybody wants to drop? Let me ask. Yeah, I want to drop uh, for today. So I want to <laughs> Somebody want to drop. <laughs> okay. But uh, I will watch the recording. If you want to continue, I will watch the recording and uh, Okay, so I will, I will not go over like the whole thing today, maybe like uh, uh, the certain things like pe what people pick and choose uh, will go over this, but uh, I will definitely go for an advanced concept afterwards so that like uh, we can we can talk about that because I think nobody is going to ask questions from what I've taught you so far. Uh, the interview questions will be from these advanced concepts. I have given like many interviews, I've taken many interviews, I've never asked like I only ask questions from like the basic concepts when, when I know somebody is very new or like some pressure is coming in. If someone says like, I have an experience of like six years or seven years, it's directly going to the advanced level. It's, it's never going to be from the basic. Okay. So I will, I will go for, uh, like some advanced topics, especially like join or like some, if someone picks anything, well, I will just scroll through. And maybe we'll schedule another session just for um, like uh, like go to have an overview of these and like just go through these. Uh, I have tried to do a like according to me, I think I've tried to do a good job of like uh, explaining each scenarios even for me because now this is something that I've created. I can I can refer back to so you will understand like what the question is, what the answer is, and how it's getting uh, like from we are going from this to this. That's a, that's how I've tried to uh, create the answers. So we'll, we'll go over that and we'll see if, if this makes sense. So if people wants to drop, they can drop and we'll, we'll continue. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay. Uh, Could you share the slides which you have created? Oh, I'm not it's sharing. I thought I'm sharing. Shared actually. He shared in the morning, in the afternoon, in the WhatsApp group. He shared and uh, everybody downloaded from there and you can save in the computer. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. If not like just uh, scroll uh, or somebody can comment again on that. So just 
expect from there. If not, just ask again. I will be able to send it. Okay. So join here, right? Uh, this this uh, is kind of a cheat sheet which helps uh, to understand like how how the data is flowing from one table to another. So let's say there are two tables, table one and table two. Well, if you want to bring all the data from this uh, table one, you will execute this command, st uh, select star from table one. If you want to bring data from uh, this table two, select star from table two. This this is there is no join in this one, in this particular one. This is just an example kind of establishing what what the what this is this these commands do. Now look at the first join. What it's going to do is select table one as T one and left outer join as uh, T2 on T1.fk, T2.id. What that means is what do you have FK in this particular table in T uh, in, in T1 is stored as ID in the second table. And uh, think of this as a uh, customer name, a, a customer ID, customer name. That's about it. In table one, you have customer ID and customer name. What it's you a have primary key and foreign key relationship. That is all that only gets done when it's defined. I mean, like uh, you, you're mentioning T1 dot FK is equal to FK is just an idea. FK is not a foreign key. FK is oh, okay. like, here. Let me create, like, let me create an example here. So table one, because it's doing FK, right? Table one uh, has column called FK uh, and it has name, right? Table two. Uh, Add ID and uh, address. Okay, so uh, what it's doing is um, now ID is equal to FK. For some reason, I just wanted to name ID in in the table too, but ID is FK the whole time. Okay, make sense. Now you can only do join when the values match. If the values don't match, then it, it won't do the join, right? So it's doing, oops, it's doing, uh, table one has name, like uh, all of us who are on the call, uh, and it has given a number to us, one, two, three, four, each, each person has their own uh, number. It's just, let's call it key, right? And ID is same uh, here in, in this table, and it stores our address for all of us. So now let's look at like how, how this is, uh, like if we are running the values, what, what it's going to bring. All the values on, on the table one. So, all yeah, the values. so yeah, let's look at that example. Now what it's doing is, uh, and, and your foreign key case, right? So, it, it will not work here because like in this particular scenario, right? I'm only doing, uh, the, the, I'm only bringing this. If you have the already have a dependency on table two to bring data, which is in table one, then it's basically doesn't, uh, solve the purpose. This means you are only bringing the rows that you are uh, saying the join you use is to see the intersection of those, right? So there is, there is no dependency for data to be in uh, table two and table one. Like it, it it's not like if, what you are saying is if table one has thousand rows, table two will have also have thousand rows. That's not the case, right? Okay. Right? Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. So now let's look at table one. Table one is uh, T1 and uh, you are doing a left outer join and table two. So it will bring data for like the data is in table one and only which IDs are present in uh, table two. For now, for an example, let's construct this. Uh, so let's do table one, table two. So here I have FK, I have name, here I have ID, I have address here fk is one two three four five six so i'm gonna have name so then john uh jane is the so 
and now in this column in this table i'm going to have one two one two three six uh one two three six that's it i only have address for so xyz main street uh abc uh Boulevard and uh, one, two, three main street and uh, LMN. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, what's the common one? Uh, road, LMN road. So, like this is this is how the table exists in two. So any, any questions on this data so far? No. No? Okay. So now let's look at if you, if you are executing this particular query of left outer join, what the output will be. Can anyone tell me? If not, then I'm, I'm, I'm going to explain, but, but it will, it will show one, two, three information. Mm -hmm. Jatin, John, Jane, mm -hmm. and uh, X, Y, Z, Main Street, ABC, uh, Boulevard, one to three Main Street. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's Jatin, John, Jane plus Joe as well because six is there, right? You are right. You are right. I missed it. Yeah. So it will do for these, and it will just show that. Now let me create one problem for you. Let's say this is also ID. Hi. If I run this query uh, here, like whatever this query is, select star from table one, left outer join. Table and uh, they have given a name, right? They have given an alias. So that's good. T1. And they have do, you have to do T2 uh, on t1 dot id equal to t2 dot id right this is what i have done right i have done id and id here so if do you what do you think if i run this command do you think it's going to execute no it duplicates also comes no no it will throw an error it will throw an error can you tell why every mixture which id can't recognize that means Say that again. Uh, why it, it, it throw error? Like it, it can't recognize which ID from which table. Yeah, it, because the ID it will show there's an ambiguity here. Like uh, it doesn't know which I. So like you can't have like this ID and this ID in this. Like if you think of an output, the how it uh, output will generate is ID, name, ID again, and address, right? So what it will it will throw an error. So what you will have to do is you will actually have to select id comma name comma address and then bring these from uh, this this is how it's going to execute and you will going to get the same uh, output when it was fk it's the output is going to be the same that's how you execute it these are these are certain things these are small things i'm teaching you because uh, i've seen uh, when when uh, i get a resource assigned to me right they they make these kind of mistakes and they are embarrassed to ask and like who to figure it out like how how to do it um they they make these kind of mistakes and then from you can tell like okay he's a rookie he doesn't know and and like you can easily catch okay then then a uh, level of trust or the you can establish like what kind of work i'm going to give to this this person and like uh like how much he is capable of you have that kind of understandings once once you start seeing the mistakes that they are doing because there are there are some like uh, advanced level mistake which are logical and like which is like requires some brainstorming and like some are syntax mistakes and all some are like these kind of mistakes you understand like if they are not able to understand the error they are getting you understand like what's what's the what's going on with them so the if you, the the reason i'm saying this is let's say you receive an error 
right an ambiguity in a, a certain kind of an error what you do is just take that error and go to the stack overflow or just google it and it will tell you what you what you are doing wrong and how do you even solve for it keep that like stack overflow is uh, kind of a bible for all all of us as a developer and uh, we like we use it like for every error i get like e either it's python either it's sql like all just stack overflow provides an answer for everything but that's a website stack overflow. Uh, here we need to add a table name before that id right like t1 dot or t2 dot yeah yeah here um, yeah t1 dot because again it will show an error of like okay where it needs to pick yeah t1 dot yeah it needs to be where is the stack or it's a website yeah stack overflow is uh, uh in hindi it's called a grunt do you know grunt like i know the way does no grunt you, yes. you guys don't know grunt Grant. I know, I know. Grant, I know. Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, yeah, Bhagavad Gita. Like, yeah. So this is this like is the stack overflow is like a grant for us. You can do like search anything here. Like, uh, uh, like how do I convert date SQL? So first answer would be like uh from this like need to be a little specific. Like stack overflow here like convert date time in sql server like it will clearly give you an example how can i convert date time from this format into this format if you know what you are trying to do it you will have the answer there there you go just copy this copy paste you your answer is ready to go like and multiple answers so this is like five answers and this is the top answer then you have like this is another like people like this like this means it has it was it, it was five time up there is uh, this answer there is this answer there is this answer so you will have multiple answer but see people have uh, stack or can be too and you might want to try google before <laughs> like so everything that just like someone runs into a wall they just go for stack overflow and try to just do it because this is this is like what what he's asking here is a very basic thing and whatever uh, tool that he's using it will have it will be in their help book and like he need, doesn't need to stack or provide and but people come and help people come to save so it is very common to you you stack overflow okay thank you no thank you so much okay so now let's get back to uh, Okay, so you, we, we covered the first left outer join, right? Now, uh, this is called exist. Exist is when you want to see uh, an intersection, which is equal to inner join. You see this matches this inner join, but if, instead of using an inner join, you are using exist as a column. Exist is not a very helpful command. Reason being is it's taking both the tables, is reading both the tables and it's uh, doing, uh, uh, it's bringing only where it matches. Now, if you think about it, like here and here, uh, I'll escape again. Here, when you're the now, if someone writes that query and it's trying to get to the same, like this and this will have the same output, right? Inner and semi here. Yes. Right. Okay. So this will have the same. Uh, same output but if someone writes this and like it's giving me this as an output i know like okay they don't have the understanding of this you want to do this through from where joins because joins gets executed first and exist come like very like after the where conditions and all so like it's it's exist is very uh low in the executing order the first is the from so if someone is executing that is like is a very rare case scenario where where they need to check for it so like make sure you you uh, know when you are executing this this particular area um, this particular command you know which which output that you are looking for so what it's doing is like where select this is where exist in select one from table two from table one where this they basically match on each uh, in the same key 
so it's it's basically doing the same thing but no one uses uh semi join anymore it's it's uh it's the inner join that people use okay it's doing the same thing make sense okay so we any of that we can use either yeah yeah the, any uh, of that you can use but the preference is to inner join doing things yeah. through join okay okay uh then we have left outer join when you if you mentioned that td dot td two dot id is null then it will not bring if that uh data is uh there when there is an intersection but it will only bring data from t one from this table it will not where it matches on the t two it will not bring that uh, uh it will not bring the common data. Okay. Yeah, it will not bring the common data. It will only bring and common data plus the where wherever it's inter, uh, intersecting and also from the table too. It's not okay. it won't bring the whole thing. Okay. Uh, full outer join. This doesn't basically care. It's it's kind of similar to the union all. It basically brings everything and uh, you are just joining the you are you are concatenating the tables or you are like you are you are just expanding the table. Whatever the things you and you want to bring. It will just look where value it matches. It will just start uh, adding the columns to it. That's what it will do. Outer join. Uh, there is no use case for the outer join. This this full full outer join and like this uh, where T A one F K is null and this like uh, if you want to like look at this scenario and this scenario and just uh, this uh, like no one no one no one needs to do it. There are there are other ways of executing it. What you can do is you can call this minus uh like minus this like uh that's that's how people do it um there is no scenario where this is actually a practical use case uh but that's that's uh, uh that's how it gets executed if you have a, ever have a scenario where like oh i want the data from table a and table two but not where they both have where, where the uh, data is present in both that is like it's not a practical scenario again your the your four uh practical scenarios are like uh, oops. Uh, your left outer join is very common. Like uh, you will you will need to understand. Like the homework that uh, Kumar gave, it was all about the left outer join. You just continue to putting left outer join like uh, multiple times. You will start to seeing how the data formulates into it. Um, uh, left outer join and then there is a right outer join right which is exactly opposite of the uh, left outer join so instead of the table 1 you are bringing table 2 that's that's about it uh, the data and then the other common one is inner join uh, cross join no one will ask you to use it because no one understands it like the it's it's not efficient to use cross join uh, it won't it won't bring the values that you are looking for um so cross join is having like data crossing x and y and doing mapping a to b and like uh, multiple times so cross join is uh, not not the not the right answer when when somebody is executing if you write a uh, so if by mistake you so sometimes what happens is um, you write an inner query and by mistake it does a cross join depending on how the data is structured into the table if you do that, your query is going to take a huge time. You should understand by that time, like your data, your join is not working because it's 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 uh, and and the output that you will see is you will start seeing duplicates in that. That's what the basically the cross join is. It, there is a very rare scenario where you, when you are executing a cross join. I've I've only executed cross join once in my like ten years. Um, so that's that's what it. Uh, this so. This basically covers everything. These are the uh, top statement. I would say left outer join, right outer join, inner join, and like uh, that's that's about it. And same thing with here, right with a with a null. That's that's about it. I don't think there is any other join that you need to cover, worry about. So the one, two, three, oops, one, two, three, four, and this fifth. So which is basically this is a replica of each other and mirror image of each other. So that's that's all right and the same thing if you start doing this for the three tables that's how how it will work so starting having multiple uh that's that's about it for for the joins uh any any questions most of the time whenever we get uh we can use the same um, um uh, scenario like uh, if i get a problem which is having uh, 
uh, as you said, like left outer join, then I had to use the same thing like t1 dot f fk is equal to t2 dot id where t2 dot id is null. I had to mention all those. Yeah, these are the conditions. Whatever this this is a color coded. These this is this is how you have to do it. Yeah, anything this in black ex excluded, but this this is the syntax for ex executing this. Ah, oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. So I will stop here. It's eight thirty. I have to go. Thank you uh, so much for your time. No, no worries. But we can we can continue and have another session to just go over these. Uh, I will recommend just to read through like what what what's this is. So just to give you an explanation, this is the table and this is the solution. Like the what what I'm get to and how I'm getting to that is using these queries. So try to try to like uh, go through this. This is very self-explanatory. Uh, I think you should be able to do it. I've done like uh, try to add different scenarios and all. Uh, if if like I'm trying to try to explain the concept in first slide and second slide is little uh, giving you a trying to give you a hard example. Uh, and like the interview questions that you generally get asked, like this is this is a very common interview question. Like okay, tell me a difference between group by and partition by and all um same thing here like qualify why it is used and all i've created a thing uh this was this did not work in ssms uh this only works in like certain uh teradata and mysql and like other areas so but it is a very uh good statement i've tried to give the example here I, from this output I, from this table i want to get to the output so so go through this and see if if, if this makes sense and like maybe we can uh schedule a, another call to go over these concepts. I've, I've given examples there, like from this, I want to have the output in this format and how do I get to is, is through this this uh, command. So I've tried to do that for like all, all the cases that are there, like uh, there are a bunch of concepts like uh, that, that we should understand and we should know. And I've tried to cover all of them. And this is last is just basically some things that we, we should be aware of and how, how we should use it. Yeah, we'll do it. Thank you. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. All righty. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jatin. No worries. No worries. Bye. Thank you, Jatin. Bye. 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 Thank you, Jatin. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.